Hi everyone. Here is the long-awaited video of how I build my statters, more so their technical design as to why they work and perform the way that they do. First, one of the things you will need in the construction of these statters is a dead battery. If you use a live battery, it could explode because ultimately when we install this in here, it's just going to short out. So we're only using this battery as part of a shielding technique. Um, you also need a spacer. I'm using the plastic spacer that automatically came with the um, magnets in shipment. It's one quarter of an inch thick with a hole in the middle. It's just a spacer. Um, you also need some tin shielding. Uh, everybody asks me what's it made of. It's just flashing. You buy it at most any local hardware. Uh, one person said he researched it and said it was made out of um, iron and zinc. Uh, I've been told otherwise it has some tin in it. Whatever it is, it doesn't make any difference. Just as long as it's got, as long as it's a magnetic property based shielding, it will work just fine. I use it thin because it's easy to cut and shape. Okay, and of course, you need a magnet. This is a N52 strength neodymium magnet that is two inches by one inch by one quarter inch thick. It's just a neodymium magnet. That's what's in these two units here, or these two starters. Okay, now let's take one of these guys apart. Oh, before I do, let me prove to you this is the same setup. As you can see, it repels each other. Okay, so one's pushing the other away. If we turn these guys around, it no longer does that anymore because the back end is heavily shielded. And the battery is part of a, a very big secret, which gives me the extra protection on the back edge. Um, it may have something to do with the formulation of the properties in the magnet, I mean in the battery, but it doesn't make any difference what it is. The fact is that it works. And these are alkaline batteries I'm using. I repeat the word, alkaline. Okay, so, and they are designed quite differently internally. Okay, and then we turn them around and they work the same. Okay, turn them around this way, nothing. Turn them around this way, suddenly they repel each other. Okay, now let's take one of these guys apart. Okay. I have an X-Acto knife here, just a blade. It's an aluminum handle, but it's a steel blade. And we're gonna, this is wrapped in aluminum tape used by duck workers. So let's cut this guy open. This is also the same standard that of course I've been using in the other videos. For those of you who got to see them before YouTube, suspended my other account. Obviously, uh, for whatever reasons, YouTube or somebody, somebody behind YouTube does not want these videos being posted. Um, regardless, whatever the reasons are, I'm putting them back up now. Okay, see so I gotta cut down the side. Okay. And I'll cut down the other side as well. Remember, I'm cutting off the, cutting away, or slicing open the aluminum foil taping that keeps this all housed together. You have to tape this together, otherwise it'll come flying apart when you try to use it. Okay, now as you can see here, you should be able to see something white there. That's the plastic spacer that I showed you that was right here. So it's the same thing. So I'm just going to bend this thing open. Oops, now some things might snap apart and fly and because this was tightly tucked together. Okay, now I'm bending it still even further. As you can see I'm just bending it open. Okay. Now, the top side, which is the side that this, the deck screw didn't stick to, besides the double installation, um, was a simple top. It's a, a metal top, which is used, you know, in um, uh, uh, cans. And I'll give you an example here, as you can see. It's, it's definitely a magnetic lid. It's a lid to a can. Okay, so what I've done here is I just simply layered it. In this case I put an extra thick piece of cardboard in here or paper. I think it's doubled over many times. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. And there's the battery I was telling you about. You gotta make sure it's dead because it can short out and get really hot and possibly explode. That's on the back edge. So when I turn these two back edges that didn't repel each other is because the um, battery was the extra piece in the, in the uh, whatchamacallit, in the stator. Okay, now if you pull this next part out, uh, I 
I think it's still stuck on the tape. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's stuck on the tape. And we'll put this battery down now. And this next part here is another shielding casing. Let's see if I can just cut this off real quick here. Okay, so there's the first layer of shielding, or the last layer of shielding, here's the first layer. And again, there is another battery in there. So we have double shielding on the back edge, which is the leading edge that the magnets, the moving magnets approach first. Okay, so if you peel this open, just like the other one, you peel it open by bending it back, like a, open it like a book, you'll find yet another spacer in here. Same thing I showed you before, it's plastic. And here's the battery on the same back edge, right there, and it goes right there. Now, right there next to my thumb, right here, is the battery. I mean, I mean, excuse me, is the magnet. <sighs> there you go. There's the same neodymium magnet that I had showed you a moment ago that is an M52 by 2 inches by 1 inches by a quarter of an inch thick. Okay, and this is just tin. Let me just show you. I'll drop it down so you can hear it. It's just piece of tin, or whatever you want to call it, aluminum shield, and, uh, it's not aluminum, excuse me, but um, it's just flashing, it's typically used for roofers and carpenters when they're building decks and roofs, nothing special, any metal will do as long as it's, it's metallic, anyway guys, that's how all this works, it's very simple, very straightforward, and uh, very easy to build, the whole point of this is, is that like somebody bro uh, brought up, is that you deal with equilibrium, if when another magnet is passing, towards it, it has the same opposing force as it does when it passes it. So one cancels the other out and it doesn't work. However, with the construction of the statters as I have it now, the back edge, as a magnet would pass over it, is almost dead. It's very, the, the, the flux has been highly suppressed. So when you get on the front edge, then suddenly, because the front edge is not shielded. There is no shielding on the front edge of the stator. None. Just tape. And this aluminum tape does not shield um, the flux. So when I originally opened that up, you could see that it was simply a um, open-ended stator. So the back end is closed, the back door is closed, the front door is wide open. So when a magnet passes over it, let's see if I can get one of these magnets here. Ah, darn magnets so strong. Got to handle them with great care. All kinds of crazy things start happening. Okay. Now, see, here's the back edge. Okay, you, you can see, I, I'm in control here. I'm not the... Okay, I just lost control there. Whoops, I guess I got the wrong fields here opposing it. Let's try this here. Which is it? Okay, there we go. Okay, now, but when you do it on the front edge, whoa. <clears throat> you can see the... Force is very strong, but on the back edge, the force is not that strong. On the front edge, it's very strong. So that's how my statters work. We have an extremely front, a strong front door, if you'll excuse the expression. Front door meaning that this is where the um, most energy in the back door has the least energy of flux. And so as the magnet approaches, and do it so you can see in such a way. So when the magnet approaches the back door, it doesn't see that field very much. It's it's weak field. But as it moves toward the front, suddenly it sees it. It's really strong. But what we do is we use the opposing forces. So this way, we have push. So like poles um, push away from each other. So we have it. So and th there's another part of this formula I haven't shown you all, which is very critical. And there's not time enough in this 10-minute video to show you. But there's one last key element on how the stator interacts with the magnets that are set up that are also set up in a very special way. So if you build the stator, you're only halfway there. But this is the key holy grail, what I have affectionately called one-way magnetic shielding. Good luck, everybody, with your experiments. And I'm happy, more, more than happy to share this with you all because the greed of wealth and money 
It's not important as it is getting this information out to everybody so we can move this kind of technology forward.